Today I'm going to be reacting to a video that I did with Jerry Rig Everything all over three years ago. Since then, this video has gotten over 11 million views, over 200,000 likes. I haven't watched it since then, so I'm excited to get into the video. So the Series 4 Apple Watch, with its rectangular design and curved glass edges, looks pretty sleek and pristine. Unless, of course, it's shattered. Replacement screens can cost almost as much as the watch itself. And the watch screens have gone down a little bit since then. They're still pretty expensive, but they're not as expensive as the watch. And this is, you know, three years ago. Fortunately. But what if replacing just the top glass were an option? Today I'll show you that replacing just the glass is indeed an option, while at the same time showing you why this repair should never be attempted by mere mortals. Personally, I've tried multiple glass-only Apple Watch repairs before this one, each time failing catastrophically. This time around, I'll have some extra help from a guy who does this on a regular basis. So when I asked Zach if he wanted to do this video, his first response was simply, no, I'm, I'm not going to be able to do it. I don't, I, it it's not going to be successful. And I was, I basically pushed him. I was like, I guarantee you I'll, I'll, I'll be able to help, help you go through the process of fixing it and that it will be successful. Um, it took a little convincing, but he decided to, uh, to come and give it a shot. He's found a way to make these impossible repairs possible. But still, without experience, I'd say about 99% of people who attempt this project will fail. Now that the pep talk is over, let's get started. I will, I will say this. He's, he's got a point there. Uh, I've, uh, I had, at this point, I had been doing watch repairs for years had uh, uh, all sorts of learning curves because at the time there wasn't a whole lot. I was basically pioneering a lot of the repair um, because there wasn't a lot of content uh, out there. And so, uh, uh, yeah, any any attempt without kind of having had uh, plenty of failure before kind of made this one tricky. Removing just the glass on a smartwatch or cell phone is like trying to separate two potato chips that are glued together without cracking either one of them. The concept, of course, is simple, but the execution is near impossible. It's the brain surgery equivalent. He of really took repairs. his time with this. The initial trick is that the glass curved edge of the Apple Watch Series 4 does not have any part of the display panel underneath it, nor does it have the finger sensing digitizer under the curve. It does, however, have a super fragile square ring around the bottom edge of the glass that rests up against the metal for the force touch feature, which is kind of essential to the functionality of the watch. I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. This is going to be one of those videos you got to watch all the way through. It definitely to the end. is a video that you really want to watch through the end. Uh, he's definitely right. Uh, I did hype it up a bit as far as how careful he needed to be, but uh, you really do need to be careful, especially if you haven't done this before, even if you're an experienced tech in, in, in the industry. I'm not going to use any heat yet because he can damage the force touch ring by causing it to delaminate, so I'm gently pulling away the tiny cold glass shards with my fine tip tweezers. Is this tedious? Yes. But remember we are working around layers of technology that are more fragile than potato chips, so slow and steady wins the race. Once we have the smallest glass chips pulled away from the frame, we can slide a super thin piece of stiff plastic between the glass screen and the force touch ring, taking special care not to damage the fragile ring while sawing my plastic back and forth to help it slip under the glass and slice through the adhesive. So yeah, this that technique is, is one that I still use. Um, uh, I haven't found anything better. The, the plastic tends to uh, act as a, almost like a razor blade without cutting into anything. Uh, it can damage the display if you're not careful or the digitizer flex cable on either side of the short ends of the watch. Uh, but uh, um, yeah, I haven't found a better a better technique um, that's as consistent as can be than that. That's holding it to the black force touch sensor. Pulling up a sliver of glass at the wrong angle can put pressure on the display that's under the glass and destroy it. It's like trying to defuse a bomb that could obliterate the watch <laughs> at any second. Also keep in mind that holding down the side button for too long literally calls the police. Ask me how I know. Uh, okay, so uh, yeah, this was a really funny experience. We, we uh, didn't put this in, uh, we didn't film this, but um, yeah, if you if you hold down the buttons, you uh, you accidentally basically call, call the police. And uh, they called us back uh, during filming, uh, and we had to basically tell them what, what, what was going on, that that the uh, that we were fixing an Apple Watch, and, uh, and 
it was basically, um, yeah, that it had, <laughs> that we had accidentally called them, that everything was okay. Um, you know, we, we went, we did everything correct. We, you know, we, they didn't have to come out or anything like that, but, uh, yeah, it was definitely interesting. Obviously, the more cracked the glass is, the easier it is to work on, because tiny slivers of glass can pull away easier. If the display ends up breaking, with black splotches or the touch sensitivity stops working, the only option at that point is to replace the whole screen, instead of just the glass, which is what we're trying I, to do I will make today. one correction to that. If, if the touch stops working, you can replace the glass and digitizer. Digitizer is the touch layer of the screen. It is also replaceable. However, if you get if you get the black marks that he was talking about or lines down the display, I mean, you could still use the watch technically like that, but it'd be really annoying to look at. And and those black spot the spot those those black spots tend to to spread over time. So you'd you'd want to replace the whole display. But yeah, if you if if the touch gets damaged during this uh this uh process, it's, it's still replaceable. Remember, we still can't use heat yet because of that force touch ring. It's still adhered to the metal frame. Every now and then I would run into a snag along the glass edge requiring me to swap out my piece of plastic or grab my tweezers to shimmy out another piece of glass. I've been at it for about 45 minutes now, going slow and removing each bit of glass individually. These watches are expensive, but if I can salvage this screen by replacing just the glass, I can save quite a bit of money. I'll add each sliver of glass to my glass collection off to the side until I have another opening big enough for the thin piece of plastic. I'll pop it in and start slicing between the glass and the force touch ring. This is a terribly tedious repair that I wouldn't wish upon my worst enemy. It might be stressing you out a little bit that the watch is still turned on at this point, but as long as I don't slice my plastic too deep into the watch, the inner cables should be just fine. Nothing's around the edge. I'm leaving the watch turned on so I can easily test and see if I've broken the internal potato chips. Yeah, th or not. that's a good point. So if you've if you're doing the if you're trying to get the screen off and you damage it, then at that point you can be a little bit more aggressive because you're going to be replacing it anyway. Uh, but yeah, having the screen on kind of gives you those those clues that hey, uh, I've damaged it because it is taking him. It did take him about an hour to get the screen off, but uh, and that's just because he was being extremely careful. He wanted to make it successful, and so did I. But yeah, you if he, if halfway through that process he damaged the display, he would have spent another half an hour trying to get the screen off and realize that it was been damaged and it would just been a waste of time. So once that screen is broken, there's no point in continuing, and I'm better off just buying the right. whole screen replacement exactly. instead of just the glass. Finally, after removing all the little slivers of glass and slicing my plastic under the larger chunks of glass, the whole screen is loose from the Apple Watch body. Everything is indeed still working at this point, which means we haven't messed up yet. Cross your fingers it stays that way. In order to proceed, I need something called a vacuum hot plate. This beauty can suction down objects while heating them up to soften the adhesive. It's a much more controlled environment than using my standard heat gun, and since we're working with small and delicate things, it is a needed piece of equipment for this project. I've taped over all the holes but nine, so we can have all the suction in one location. I'll add another piece of tape over the cracked Apple Watch screen so air won't slip through the cracks and cause it to lose suction science, and I'll also turn off the watch. Once the machine is turned on, it'll start warming up the adhesive that's holding the ribbon cables to the back of the screen. You can kind of see them pulling up right here. There are three of them. You need to be extremely gentle with these flex cables. To reach in and unplug the cables. I use a little bit of isopropyl alcohol now to, to help those cables loosen up. Incredibly gooey and sticky and near impossible to remove gently. Thanks, Tim Apple. Normally alcohol doesn't solve problems, but in this particular case, a drop of alcohol right on top of each of the connectors dissolves the adhesive, allowing the tape to peel still, back Still a, bit a good trick. It will become sticky again after the alcohol evaporates. Once the tape is peeled back over all three connectors, I can pop the little black latch up at the top, which unlocks the corresponding cable. The latches themselves are extremely fragile, just like everything else we've been dealing with today. <laughs> Finally, I'll grab a hold of the ribbons themselves and the top of the screen and gently but firmly pull the ribbons Still off how of the I screen. Do it. It's taken me about an hour to get to this point in the process, and we haven't even started the complex part yet. Going back to our vacuum hot plate screen separator machine, this time around I'm going to use some high tensile strength, super thin, gold-colored wire that I'll wrap around my finger to keep secure. This wire is going to be placed directly under the glass layer of the Apple Watch screen, but above the digitizer and screen layers. It's a small, fragile sandwich of high-tech components, and if you pick the wrong layer to slide through, the whole thing is destroyed. I'm not being dramatic, I'm just being realistic. 
you can see the wire sliding and slicing into one of the GUI layers inside the Now I have the changed uh, the technique to this. I, I do secure it a little bit more so it doesn't move around as much. Um, maybe, I don't know if he wants me sharing this, but uh, at this point he, he, he did the hand the reins over to me. Uh, he, uh, he wanted to, to, he had gotten pretty far in the repair and I wanted to make sure it was successful as well. He asked if I could finish cutting. So I, I did do the wire work here. Uh, to remove the screen, um, but uh, um, yeah. That's the adhesive between the glass and the digitizer and exactly where we want the wire to stay. It's like trying to separate the two halves of a very expensive Oreo, but if you break the cookie part, you That's a, a good analogy. Blocks. I'll lift the wire over the remaining curved glass chunks so it won't get caught on the edge or start cutting into the sensitive bits, and then gently keep sliding the wire through the gooey warmed up adhesive layer. The whole thing is heated to about 80 degrees Celsius right now, and that's keeping the Oreo nice and soft for the wire to slide through. The suction of the machine is keeping the watch screen from moving around too much while the wire is sliding through the adhesive. Once the wire finishes the cut and pops out the other side, the screen is loose and fully free to pull away from that top now glass Now you can layer. see here, there's only a little bit of adhesive left. This is, uh, this is nice when this happens when the majority of the OCA remains on the glass. It's less cleanup work um, and uh, it less, dam less, less potential damage to the digitizer, which is, which is great. The cracked glass is now removed from the display. You can see some of the adhesive residue on the digitizer layer, which is sitting on top of the display layer, but that's pretty easy to clean off. Nothing looks physically damaged yet, so I think we're still good to continue. The hardest part of the repair is now done, kind of. The little bit of rubbery adhesive that is left on the screen can be gently rubbed off, keeping in mind that this is like trying to rub flavor dust off of a Dorito, and one wrong move can crack the whole thing. He's got a point there. You see the, the little shards of glass that are kind of embedded there in, in that little bit of adhesive. If it gets caught in your thumb and you, in you, or your finger and you, in you, in a, you run it across the screen, it will scratch it, potentially causing touch issues with the digitizer, so you gotta be really careful at this point. A little bit of acetone can dissolve the rest of those lines. Still the same chemical I use. Display. But before I go any farther, I want to test and make sure my little Dorito is still in one piece. So I'll peel back the tape over those connectors and pop each of the three ribbons into their latches on the back of the screen. Peeling back the tape reveals those little two arms to help kind of push it in. Turn everything on. The Apple Watch should still function at this point, even without the glass in place. This is something that I completely skip now during my repair process. I don't test uh, in the middle. Uh, you kind of have, a, you kind of know if you've damaged the display during the removal process. It's either obvious to the eye, or, or you just get a get a sense that something went wrong. And I, in, the, in those cases, I'll test. But for the most part, uh, I know that I've gotten it successfully. So I really only test once I've installed the glass. And uh, at, at this point, it doesn't take too much to get to there. So uh, I kind of just skip that stuff and save myself a little bit of time uh, in the process. The touch sensitive digitizer is still layered on top of the screen portion. Yeah, it'll be a tiny bit finicky because it's designed to have a glass layer on top, but the watch should still function in general at this point. So far, so good. I'll turn the watch off again and remove the cables from the back of the screen. Now it's time to add a new layer of glass to the top. This part is pretty easy actually. Adding the glass requires a special kind of glue. Once the screen is totally clean from dust or fingerprints, I'll grab a little Lego to prop the screen up. I'll explain why in just a second. I mostly just wanted to say little Lego though. Well, one of the reasons he said little Lego is it, he uh, he uses Legos a lot or when he can in, in videos because he, he, he wants Lego to, to sponsor him. Uh, the, the method he's about to show is uh, using LOCA. That's liquid optical clear adhesive. It's a completely legit way to do it. I'd still do it that way if I don't have access to a laminator or autoclave. Uh, there's some pros and cons to it, um, and, I'll, and I'll get into the, the pros and cons of, of using LOCA versus using uh, OCA. I'll clean both sides of the replacement glass and add a dollop of LOCA, liquid optical clear adhesive. This stuff is pretty cool, actually. It's what's going to hold the glass layer securely to the display. The important thing when setting the glass down is that there's no air bubbles caught under the glass. I did catch one air bubble during my first placement, so I pulled that off and popped it with a pair of fine tip tweezers and then tried setting the glass down again for the second time. 
Resting the display on top of the Lego allows the display to sit up inside the curve of the glass as it rests down into place. We uh, did do this a few times. I told them it's going to be really tricky if you haven't done this a handful of times to be able to get the glass on there, bubble free. Um, and uh, But I told him, hey, if you get a single bubble, I'll show you how to get it out. And so he's like, okay, I'm not going to clean it again. Let's just go for it. We were we had been filming for a few hours by this point, so he was... Uh, it's not, not, not your typical video for him, so he was ready to, to move on, if you know what I mean. But once again, I caught a little bubble under the glass as the adhesive flattened out towards the edges. It's not a huge deal, it just means that I have to gently persuade that little bubble to migrate towards the edge of the glass with a tiny bit of pressure. This little bit of pressure is also pushing out glue on the underside of the glass that'll have- He did use quite a bit of uh, loca um, at the time. I hadn't really formulated how many uh, drops of loca, depending on the size of the screen. Uh, I was kind of doing it by eye, and uh, we did end up putting a little bit more than needed on this one, which, which makes uh, uh, for extra cleanup work and things like that. We'll have to clean up later, but as long as the loca isn't getting on the electronics, I'll be okay. The cool part about this glue is that it's not going to dry on its own. It stays liquid and gives me plenty of time to clear the bubble and make sure the display underneath is totally lined up underneath that glass. The display needs to be centered evenly on every side without any of the copper edges showing. You see how you, the, the screen right there is gold? Uh, yeah, that, that's actually how the whole display looks, but there's a, uh, an NFC, NFC uh, a pad that basically covers the majority of the back of the display, so it appears black when you shine a light from, uh, from behind. I mean, obviously the screen in the gold area still appears black, uh, without uh, when you shine a light from uh, from on top, but yeah, that's how the, the majority of the screen is. So uh, pros and cons to using a uh, loca versus oca. That's uh, liquid optical clear adhesive versus just optical clear adhesive. Pros to using loca are you have time to move the screen around to align the line it with the glass. You could uh, potentially install it too high, too low, too left, right, or even at a slight angle within that that bowl that the glass, uh, the, the shape of the glass is kind of like a bowl. So it kind of sits in there like that. And so you have time to kind of play around with it before curing it in place versus using OCA, um, where as soon as you, as soon as it touches, uh, because it's already basically a, a solid adhesive, it sticks in place. And so you have to get that alignment perfect the first time. Otherwise you have to go through the process of removing that screen, cleaning up the glass, uh, removing all of the uh, the OCA, uh, putting a new one, uh, laminating it all back together. It's just it's it's it can be a hassle, but you also have the benefit of not having a liquid that can uh, make make the job messy and harder to to work around um, things like that. You also have the benefit of not getting bubbles if you have a laminator or an autoclave because that'll actually remove all of the bubbles, laminate it nice and perfectly for you get an even uh, distribution of adhesive around the entire screen instead of maybe having too much adhesive on one side and not enough on the other. There's, so there's pros and cons to both. Uh, they, both uh, they both work. Uh, it's just a matter of do you have the tools or, or not. I can shine a light through the underside of the display to make sure everything is proportional. And then I can hit the whole thing with a UV or ultraviolet light. These magical rays of artificial sunbeams are what dries or cures the liquid optical clear adhesive that's holding the glass to the display. It only takes a few seconds for the glue to start hardening and then a few more minutes for the glass to become permanently attached to the display again. It's pretty crazy stuff. Thumbs up for that. I do have to clean out the seepage from under the display from when I pressed out that little bubble. But see, you can see the amount of loca here was way more than I anticipated we'd have to have when we flipped it over. Um, he did put quite a bit more uh, uh, loca than needed. Um, and, you know, it, it's not the end of the world, but you can see it is quite a quite a bit of mess that, 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 uh, that he had to clean up here. But once that's cleaned up, I can cure the underside of the glass to keep the edges from running. And then we're pretty much done. I'll grab the screen and pop all three of those ribbons back into their corresponding latches and lock the fragile flaps gently down into place. Then after making sure there is no glass slivers or old adhesive or dust resting on that force touch ring, I can make sure everything still turns on. I'm just as surprised as you are. How's them apples? 
If the touch sensitivity still seems to be intact, I'll make sure to line the antenna tab on the back of the screen up with the slot on the motherboard and set the screen down into place to test the force touch. And it looks like the force touch works. For such a fragile, intricate project, we definitely got lucky. They got rid of the force touch uh, on the Series 6. Um, I mean, uh, they kind of brought it back for the SE. Uh, um, but uh, the, uh, um, yeah, going through the, this this whole process uh, uh, was interesting. Like, he's using, for example, I think he's using B7000. That's the adhesive at the time that I was using. I've uh, since switched to a cold press adhesive um, that, that seems to be more, uh, uh, that has a, a, a longer... Uh, life to it. Um, the B7000 tends to, I feel like it gets weaker over time and in a way that doesn't really quite hold up, especially against any form of, of liquid. I can add some water resistant flexible adhesive to the edge of the display. I won't trust the thing to be water resistant anymore, of course, Good but the point. adhesive is going to hold the glass in place yep. and it's still flexible enough to allow the force touch to work. Which is one of the reasons why I was using it at the time, because a lot of adhesives, when they cure, they get solid. And that would make it so you couldn't activate the force touch. Um, and it just created a not, uh, too, too rigid of a, of, a, of a bond between the display and the glass, or the display and the frame, uh, causing uh, the glass to crack a little bit easier. At least that's kind of what I, what I saw. Uh, from using other uh, more uh, harder adhesives, I just saw a lot more of them break a second time than when switching to a, uh, a, a more pliable adhesive like this or the, uh, the, uh, the cold press that I, that I now use. This is an absolutely brutal repair. I've done this exact same procedure on a few smartphones in the past, so I'm familiar with the process. And even with my previous experience, it took me close to three hours to finish this watch. This is definitely my first and last successful glass-only Apple Watch repair. And he has stuck to that. Uh, I have asked if he wanted to do, uh, you know, videos since the since the Series Four. Um, yeah, he's uh, after this video. He he's like, nah, man, that's all you. Uh, you know, I've already we've already he's already covered his bases on uh, on getting one done successfully, and and it turned out really nice. Um, but yeah, he's uh. Uh, he he's on to bigger and better things. I'm sure you've you've if you're watching my channel, you've definitely watched his. He does some amazing amazing things. Uh, so uh, uh, yeah, he's yeah he's like this is your realm. Keep 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 it up. Just uh, um, he's okay with me leaving him out of it basically. If you're wondering to yourself who in their right mind would want to do this, I'll leave a link in the description to my buddy who helped me with this repair. He actually does this repair for other people on a regular basis. That's it's right. kind of nice to save a few hundred bucks by fixing a cracked watch instead of buying a new one. Mm -hmm. Every version of the Apple Watch is going to be slightly different. I'm pretty impressed with how good this turned out, though. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go find some Doritos and Oreos that I can go crunch the crap out of. <laughs> Come hang out with me on Instagram and Twitter. Hit that subscribe button, and thanks a ton for watching. I'll see you around. All right. Yeah, so there's the video. You can see he's got my channel there uh, at the end. I'm also in the description. But yeah, this was a, a fun video, man. It's been it's been a long time, and since then, I think uh, a lot of my success, as far as the amount of watches I've been able to repair over the years, has been because of uh, m you know this video. Here's kind of a, a collection of all of the watches that I fixed over the last little while. And this isn't even all of it. Um, uh, we're friends now. Uh, he's, uh, I ran into him, uh, I think it was, uh, maybe a year before they asked him to do this video at a theater. Um, uh, you know, so, uh, yeah, uh, Zach's a great guy. Uh, I'm, if you, if you aren't subscribed to his channel, you should, cause he does some, uh, he does some amazing things, uh, amazing videos. Uh, like and subscribe to my channel as well if you haven't already. Uh, and let me know what your th what your thoughts are about uh, me doing reaction videos. Uh, I've always wanted to react to this video, and I finally got the got the nerve to to do it. So uh, thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Yeah.